I suggest we're looking at is a, a simulation that has multiple levels. It has this level we call the human world. And then it has other levels um, which are beyond human sight. And, you know, there, people talk in, uh, in the esoteric world about the astral dimension. If you don't want people to grasp the nature of the reality that, that they're experiencing, then you don't teach it in the, right. in the area the population has That's access right. to. So um, you want them to believe that there is this world and this world only. I mean, you get religions to religious people to believe there's another. Right. Basically, this physical world is all there is. So at that point, any idea of something beyond the world of the scene, which is what? Beyond the world of the five senses, mm -hmm. is madness and can't exist. Um, so uh, when people talk about uh, uh, other, uh, be, because the, the, the five senses demand that their se this, those senses are stimulated before mm -hmm. they will believe anything. That's right. Right? So they say, well, I've never seen a reptilian. Right. Right. Yeah. But by the way, you are looking and perceiving uh, visual reality with a band of frequency so small, it's hysterical. It's hysterical, right. right? So you can't see because anything beyond that frequency band, although it exists, you can't see it. Right. And if you demand that only if I can see it, touch it, taste it, etc., you're going to believe in it then you're only going to believe in what happens in the narrow band of frequency. You're not going to perceive the possibility of anything going on beyond it. So that's what this cult has done in terms of programming the population. Welcome to Far Out with Faust, everybody. I am Faust Chicho, and today I am thrilled and honored to be joined by the one and only David Icke. Let me tell you about David in case you haven't uh, been paying any attention in the last 30 years. David, he is uh, he's the conspiracy realist. He's dedicated his last 30 years of his life to meticulously investigating, researching, questioning, and documenting and covering who and what is actually controlling this world. A little bit backstory for David. He was a famous football player in the UK, soccer for the Americans listening. Uh, and his career was uh, cut short by arthritis, but he then pursued a career in journalism and uh, found himself back in the spotlight as a presenter with the BBC, of, of all places. He dabbled in mainstream politics. Uh, he was a spokesman for the Green Party. Um, but his life would change forever in 1991 when he experienced what is uh, commonly described as, uh, I mean, at least on my show, a, a Kundalini awakening, a, a, a spiritual awakening. Um, since that time, David has authored over 20 books, spoken in over 25 countries. His research and subsequent revelations into prominent political figures, influential families, global events, of course, has made him a target of some criticism, naturally. Um, but if we've learned and confirmed anything over the last three years, we know that it's the elites and their lapdogs don't censor people who are peddling lies. <laughs> they don't waste their time. Uh, David's books have been incredibly consistent uh, and wonderful in a great many ways. Not only his accurate predictions of the global events that we're seeing unfold before our eyes, but his promotion of expanded consciousness, mindfulness, peace, and unity have resonated with millions of people all over the globe. If you want to get to know him more, if I've sparked your interest beyond this podcast, he's got an incredible documentary called Renegade, The Life Story of David Icke. And he's got a series on Gaia, which I, I've watched twice, called uh, Escape the Matrix. I highly recommend either of them. I'm so sorry for the long-winded introduction, my friend, but you you yeah. earned it, David. Welcome. Thank you so much for beaming into the show. Thanks, mate. Um, oh, my God. So I was trying to figure out the best place to start. But, um, you know, I, I that moment that you had, uh, you know, with Betty Shine always kind of comes back because that was kind of a big turning point in in your in your life um can you why don't we start start there and give everyone a, a quick uh if you can idea of what what was going on in your life when when you met her well i was uh, a television presenter with the bbc and i was a national spokesman for the british green party at the time and i had this very strange experience throughout 
1989, going into 1990. And that was whenever I was in a room alone, it didn't feel like I was alone. There seemed to be a presence there. And I'd not had a, a life experience before that that put me in those situations, what people were wrongly called paranormal. Um, and so it was uh, all a bit strange to me. And it went on throughout 1989 until March of um, 1990, when I'm in a hotel room working for the BBC. I've, I've just come back from the BBC television studios. And I sat on the side of the bed because the presence in the room was so, so obvious, so tangible. And I spoke out into the room, uh, empty room as it appeared to be. And I said, would you please contact me if there's anybody there because you're driving me up the wall. And uh, a few um, days later, it was only a few days, um, I was just down the road from where I'm sitting now uh, at a railway station where there was a cafe and a, a, a new shop and that sold a few books. And um, I was uh, with my son, Gareth, who's now, of course, a big strapping lad. He's only a little boy then. And uh, I got stopped by a railway worker who wanted to talk to me about football, soccer. Uh, there was a big game on that day, as, as I remember. And when we'd finished ch chatting, I couldn't see where uh, Gareth was. So I went into the, the news shop where I know he would be, reading the books on steam trains, which we both liked. And um, there he was, and I stood at the, the entrance at the door, and I said, Gaz, we're, we'll, um, we'll go and get some lunch. So, um, and I turned to go, but my feet um, wouldn't move. And what had happened was the atmosphere around me had changed. What I would now say was a, an electromagnetic field. I had no idea what was going on at the time. And I heard this... Um, not a voice, it was a very strong thought form went through my head, not generated by me, certainly consciously. And it said, go and look at the books on the far side. Uh, so I'm in, a, in the land of the bewildered then, and I start walking towards, it's the only, you know, my, my feet can now walk when, once I've started moving towards the books. And uh, I was bewildered too, because I knew that new shop still there. Uh, they... Uh, sold a very few books and they were overwhelmingly romantic novels which the the, the tourists it's a seaside resort um by the reading the deck chairs on the beach and so i thought what am i going over here the books but in among the books was this um this book uh, called mind to mind by betty shine who i didn't know anything about but it was different to the other books so i picked it up and i turned it over and i saw the blurb and uh it talked about a psychic. I thought, psychic? This lady's a psychic. It was written this book, and it was basically an autobiography. So I bought the book, and I, uh, I read it in 24 hours. I found it fascinating. And then I contacted her, and I went to see her, maybe a, you know, a week later, two weeks later, um, in her house um, not far from Brighton on the south coast of England. And I was on my way to uh, present a program to the BBC, uh, I went by her house. And uh, so a couple of um, couple of visits, and it was just a chat. And then on the third visit, again, I was going up to present an, a program uh, for the BBC. And I was sitting there on this medical type bench in her front room, and she was doing the, the hands healing next to my left knee. And suddenly I felt like a spider's web had gone on my face. And it hit me immediately because in her book, she'd said when other levels of reality are trying to lock into you, you sometimes feel like a spider's web on your face because that's, of course, an, another electromagnetic field. And um, I said nothing to her, but she, about 15 seconds later, reeled her head back and said, my God, this is powerful. I've got to close my eyes for this one. And I'm sitting there completely you know <laughs> what the hell is going on i'd never been in this situation before and she started telling me what they were telling me telling her to tell me which was i was going to go on a world stage and reveal great secrets that um i would have information put directly into my mind and other times i would be led to knowledge 
and many, many, many other things, all of which have turned out to be true. And uh, I mean, the, the, the thing about knowledge in my mind, uh, when I first started this journey, after that encounter, that experience, um, and lots of things happened in my life immediately afterwards, like I left the BBC or the BBC left me. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very synchronistic the way it all happened. Uh, and in the first maybe couple of years, um, I would be led to knowledge. And that's gone on since, but it's like you would bump into people, you'd have personal experiences, you'd, you'd walk in, into books or documents or different sources of information, but they were all about the same thing. They were all pushing you in the same direction. And so for the first couple of years, I would, I would look at the information that was synchronistically coming into my, into my life. And I would then conclude from that information, what I thought was going on. But after about a couple of years that really switched and has stayed like it ever since. And that's, I would, know what was going on and then the names dates places detail would come after that yeah well that thing about we will put knowledge into his mind directly into his mind and other times will lead into knowledge has, has all kind of happened and you know i couldn't put together um the the vast swathe of interconnected information that i have if i was doing it purely from my conscious mind and purely from my own initiative, if you like, you couldn't do, you couldn't put that together uh, in that period uh, or anything close to it. So what's been happening is this synchronicity in my life, which was going on before I now realized, but became conscious after the mm -hmm. Betty Shine experience, um, was, um, was basically giving me the puzzle pieces uh, and I was putting the puzzle pieces together. And, and as you, you do when you're putting a jigsaw puzzle together, the more pieces you put in, the more you can see what the picture is. So mm -hmm. you put the later pic uh, pieces in even quicker. And so that's basically what's, uh, what, what's happened. And, you know, um, there is a, despite the, uh, the appearances, uh, I do understand why, um, of what's happening in the world now, what the direction that we're heading, um, there is a force uh, that is seeking to um, to to break this mm -hmm. dis dismantling of human society to the point of um, preventing what is planned for humanity from from happening. And to do that, what is required is for people to first of all tune into that level of awareness, and then do what we what we feel to do as a result of that connection and that means an end to complaining about things and saying um, oh it's terrible what they're doing um, and oh I know what they're going to do next and, and that's fine but there also has to be um, a response mm -hmm. not a response that fights the enemy but a response that ceases to cooperate with our own enslavement because there's 8 billion people being enslaved basically mm -hmm. and a relative handful of people behind it doing it. And uh, it can only happen if, if we um, cooperate with it, you know, and we, we, we've seen many examples in the last um, two years, two and a half years oh my God. of what happens if you just do what you're told without question and don't sure have, have any, um, any self-respect to say, hey, you know, uh, am I being told the truth here? And should I actually be doing what they're telling me to do? Um, if you don't do that, then you you get what we had, which was global fascism, mm -hmm. uh, which is designed to be permanent uh, eventually. And then you had the other people, myself included, who said, hold on, um, I'm going to start looking at what you're telling me is happening and I'm going to mm -hmm. see if it stands up. And, you know, I know from decades of experience of uh, investigating what authority tells us uh, to believe, and it is invariably a load of old nonsense. <laughs> yeah. It's either 100% nonsense or it's, it's manipulated nonsense where they, they tell you enough mm -hmm. things that are true to pull you in and then they twist it 
so they take you off in the the wrong direction of basically oh they're really they're they're masters at that they sprinkle yeah. just enough truth in with their bullshit you know i call it gin and tonic with a twist you know it's, <laughs> it's, 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 give you enough see um the disinformation for anyone who's in any way streetwise um cannot be well it can be for the population we saw that but it, for, for you know mass of the population but mm -hmm. anyone who's uh, in any way, um, any way awake on the most basic level, you can't give them 100 um, percent false information, right. because th they'll start to, to to realize it's false information. What you give them is enough to pull them in mm -hmm. and then twist it. And and uh, that that you, you're quite right. They're masters at that. And there's a reason for this. And it's that what we perceive this world to be which is an external reality of physicality is actually the figment of our, not the figment of our imagination um, in and of itself, but the figment of our manipulated imagination. We're being fed a fake reality in the form of um, energetic uh, waveform information, just like Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. And like the computer, we are um, decoding that into a completely different form on the screen of the computer in this case, but in the human case, in our heads. We are um, like um, computer terminals, mm -hmm. in effect, that are turning this wave field information into a, a, the form that we perceive as an external world. And, and if you uh, do that without being yourself conscious of the fact that that's happening, or at least conscious of something greater, mm -hmm. if you're only operating on the level of the five senses, the body senses, then you are pretty much literally a computer. Yeah. What you're doing is you're taking this information, you're processing it through the five senses and how, they, how we do that, we can get into it maybe, um, and you're turning it into a reality. You are not impacting upon that reality. That, no. that reality is impacting on you. You literally, uh, I, I call them press enter people. But yeah. what um, happens if you become conscious, as we all can and we all should be and we all uh, are beyond the illusion, mm -hmm. uh, you become conscious beyond the five senses. The more conscious beyond the five senses you become, you, you start to override the program. Yes. And suddenly you, you start to develop um, a, well, a questioning, yes, but also a, a uniqueness. You, 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 you start to express the uniqueness because we all may be um, an, a, a point of attention, as I call it, within an infinite state of awareness, but we are a unique mm -hmm. point of attention. We are uniquely individual as well as, um, all connected and and that uniqueness starts to come out as you as you start to override the program if you don't override the program then you you're just like everyone else yeah and yeah. you know just very quickly i think one of the things that's um been uh, a, a prime motive of this uh, that they've um, manipulated and lied to people to have is is to um manipulate that disconnection yes between expanded awareness what people might call soul and and the um the five senses that interact with this um with this reality directly and, and i think that they, they of course they understand full well the the proclivity for humans to want to strive towards this you know this this greater feeling and and this camaraderie with their human family and they prey on that you know that's what all the you know keep keep your grandmother safe that's what the, all the messaging comes from all the virtue signaling as as it's the kind of the pop culture name for this yeah. um comes from their full understanding of the fact that human beings do strive for this you know there's we're wired for it but what what, what happens is we lose our unfortunately we lose we, we we lose touch with our you know the most important sense our sixth sense you know um and, and we get 
and enamored with the five senses and the five senses are great, you know, especially if you like ice cream and, uh, and you like to play sports and that, it, it's amazing, you know, but, but by far that is not what reality is. And yet we're in a society that is continually reinforcing and conditioning that that's all it is. Right. And that, and that goes back to, to Darwin, I think, you know, um, and I wanted to ask, you know, I, that Darwin um, a whole uh, belief system was to tell you that you are only your five senses. And you, there is nothing else. It's just that's what you are. And overwhelmingly, that is the perception that drives mainstream science. You know, you, you have uh, quantum physics, uh, but most other disciplines, they have to acknowledge quantum physics because it it's exists but they crack on in their own discipline as if it doesn't exist. They, they go on um, everything, medicine, everything is based on a, an absolute illusion that's not real. Like, the, you know, we live in a solid world, a solid reality. We have a, a solid body. Um, we, we, you know, it's like if you, um, if you believe that, the computer is real in terms of it's you, then um, you're going to get caught in, in uh, believing absolute nonsense. But when you can see, actually, this is me and this is the computer, this is what taps me into the internet, but I am something else. Once you start to believe that you are the computer and there's no division, and, and to, you, you know that, that's a, an important point because that's exactly where we're being taken. We're being taken down a road um, uh, increasingly quickly where, and Elon Musk is involved in all this, people like Ray Kurzweil, Google are involved in all this, all the Silicon Valley giants mm -hmm. are involved in this. Uh, Zuckerberg with his uh, meta. <laughs> meta, yeah. Yeah, they are um, seeking to uh, obscure the line where the computer ends and we start. So they're drawing us in to cyberspace. So cyberspace becomes increasingly our reality. And every time you, you, um, you self-identify with uh, this uh, cyber world, not that, you know, like I say, you are consciousness having a human experience and you um, are interacting with the computer and you're going on the internet, but you know it's the internet. Mm -hmm. You know this is a computer. Do you know it's not you? So you have this, this um, sense of where the divisions uh, lie. Mm -hmm. but, but what they're doing is they're pulling people more and more into the computer cyberspace world, starting off with the smartphones, then the, the technology that goes on your body, the, uh, the wearables, and now increasingly what they call implantables and mm -hmm. these headsets, which take you into uh, this, this metaverse reality. And what it's doing all the time, if you look at it, and you know, I go into this in the books in, in detail, they, they have to, those, those, and we can discuss who they are, um, those that are seeking to enslave humanity in totality, even down to what we think, they have to prevent us from tapping into expanded levels of awareness. Because once you do, you see it. Mm -hmm. You see it. You don't see dots anymore that appear to be random. You see the pattern. You see the picture. You see what's going on. And you, you are able to then... in, in um, override this program this computer program <clears throat> that, that, that we call the body and 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 impact upon it um but if you don't the program runs you and that's why most people tend to um not live life but have life live them because the the, the program is 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 driving their life right. it's driving their decisions it's driving their um they're a reaction, which is exactly how, how they want things. They, they're yeah. not in a creator state, you know, they're in a reactive exactly. state. But where I was going to go with this is as more and more people are awakening, as you well know, 
that, that the effort is to to push people more and more and more away from that and into the myopia of the cyberspace um, reality. Mm -hmm. And another aspect of this is because it's all about self-identity in the end, control of self-identity. It's control of perception and control of self-identity. Uh, what we perceive that dictates how we behave. So That's if you right. get what people perceive, you get how they behave. But also, it's self-identity. If I'm self-identifying as consciousness, having a human experience, then that taps me into that level of awareness that is beyond the illusion. So I can see the illusion because I'm, I'm actually looking at it from, from one point in my consciousness from beyond the illusion. I'm, I'm, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. And the idea is to manipulate humans so they become in the world and of the world. That's why they want us in this five sense state. So the more myopic our self-identity can be manipulated to be, the further we're going to withdraw from the true self into what I call the phantom self, the uh, the human self as a as an I rather than as an experience of the true I, and so this um, this woke uh, whole mm -hmm. agenda where you have these um, letters getting longer and longer all the time, <laughs> LGBT on and on and on it goes. Yeah. What it's doing, if you look at it from the perspective that we're talking about, is it's, um, it's focusing self-identity into smaller and smaller and smaller perceptions of self. So now you've got, you, you, you say to someone, uh, even you know, years ago, who are you? They'd say, I'm a man, I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from this religion, I have this income, I do this job, and so on. I come from this city or wherever. And they would be your labels of a human life. Mm -hmm. They're still labels. They're still not who you are. They're still only experiences that your consciousness is having briefly. But what they're doing now is so um, making myopic the self-identity of people, especially the young who are mm. being for what's coming that people self-identify the i who they are with their preferred sexuality mm -hmm. uh, and and <clears throat> so people's sense of self is being manipulated to get smaller and smaller and smaller and if you then start putting these headsets on and what are they doing <clears throat> these headsets they are especially if you if you do the um the most sophisticated of these virtual reality uh, technologies, where you wear the gloves, which give you the touch sense, right, and and uh, the the audio and the and, and the the sight sense, the headset. What is that doing? It's hacking into the five senses. Mm -hmm. It's hacking into the five senses to override the the world the five senses would normally decode into a sense of reality. And uh, I've said this. I've, I've just got a, a new book out called The Trap, in which the I trap. go deeper in the rabbit hole than I've ever been. But I said in that book, if you um, were in the womb with a headset on and you come out into the world still with a headset on and you go through your life and you, you don't lose the headset until you know the end, then what are you going to do? You're going to believe that what that headset is feeding you in terms of information and reality Mm -hmm. It's real. That's what you're going to believe. Of course you Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you see with these um, uh, virtual reality games where people put the headsets on and maybe they're in a room like this and, and they put it on and suddenly they're thrashing around. There's nothing going on in the room. Okay. No. They're, they're thrashing around because the information being fed to their brain is overriding this reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's... Um, when we know the mind can't tell the difference the mind has very it's difficult to perceive the difference and if you look at it you'll see it's firing in much the same way what if that was happening in real life so yeah. you know it's a literal the, the, jacking the, the, the metaverse the, the the pulling you it further into the into cyberspace um is to what they call it you you have an avatar mm -hmm. well let's have a look at that this 
is an avatar, if you like. It's mm-hmm. a vehicle for consciousness to experience this reality, which is a very narrow band of frequency. But then you go and you have an avatar to go into the metaverse. So now you are um, an avatar within an avatar. Now you, you're in a maze, now you're in another maze. And, and the, the idea is that people um, eventually lose their entire sense of uh, reality. You know, in an expanded uh, state of a reality, you can look at your human experience and you can see it for what it is. A brief human experience in a tiny band of frequency we call the human world. And then we move on. But then if, you, if you're body centric, five sense centric, well, that's all gone. That sense of perspective is gone. Now, now it's the five senses that are dictating your reality in interaction with this uh, human world, as we call it. And then you go into the metaverse, and now your sense of reality is a maze within a maze. So the idea is you're going to completely lose a sense of the I, and once you lose the sense of the I, you lose you. And that's, that's what um, that's what we're doing. You know, consciousness in its expanded state would look at the human world and, and, and go, oh my God. Oh my God. You know. <laughs> but, but to the five sense uh, level of perception, the, 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 the craziness, the idiocy, the extraordinary stupidity that goes on in this world is perfectly normal. Right. That's why, why, why wouldn't you drop bombs on this country and why wouldn't they drop bombs on you? I mean, I, 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 consciousness is going, oh my God, what are you right. doing? This is what we know. This is what we're taught. And that's, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I think that they, they needed Darwin. Well, they needed to take what Darwin was doing and really make it their own was to create the, a world where where they could be a part of a world they could rule really for lack of a, a better way to describe what has gone on because you know this notion of survival of the fittest and dog eat dog and you know shit on you for me to get what i want that is the belief system they needed installed in the human consciousness in order to come to the power that they you know we would eventually see them come to um and i know that's shaking loose now thanks to a lot of uh a lot of awakening and you know it's like you always say they they have to stick their head up eventually and and recent events have caused them to do that on a, on a larger scale than 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 ever before and you're going to continue to see that the question is how many people will be awake enough when they do to say wait a minute wait a minute if 99 people don't want war how do we continuously have and find a way to go to war what is what what is going on if everyone wants peace why is it so elusive? Well, that's a great question, you know, and you answer that question over and over in your books to the point where, you know, I I, I got to stop buying highlighters. I keep I keep going using using them up and throwing them out and getting a new one. But my God, do you bring the details and the evidence, the documentation together to for for anyone to see if you want to see exactly how we got to where we are. It's all in David's books. I can't recommend them enough. And context is is everything. Yeah, man, I was so I was, I kept bringing this word up. You know, when the when the quote pandemic hit. You know, I, I see what look, can we have a little context here? And people were like, Get, take your context and shove it. You know, everyone is in this panic survival mode. And I'm like, but wait a minute, how can, you know, how can how can we know anything if we don't have context? And, and that's another thing that you've. It's a a gift you have bringing bringing light to context, you know, and why the the key to why it's so important to understand context because if you if you're looking at things like you said in isolation, it's impossible to see the bigger picture. You use a wonderful, you know, I think it's a metaphor about the postage stamp. You know, I love that that you metaphor look, you, you look, use. You look at the postage stamp consensus, as I call it. Um, so what we what what we have within this human world is two worlds actually operating side by side one is hidden and one is seen the one that's hidden is a global network of secret societies with an interlocking leadership central mission control leadership and that network i call the global cult 
What that does, I mean, why are secret societies secret? Keep secrets who from the population. So they pass on at the inner core, not Bill and Joe down the Freemasons Lodge, they, at the inner core, they pass on um, information they do not want the, the public to know. Because if they did know, the world would be different. So the, there's two main uh, channels of this information. One is where the world is being taken and uh, who's taken them there. And the second one, crucially, is the nature of reality. The nature of the eye, the nature of this reality that we're experiencing. They do not want us to know that. They don't want us to know that actually uh, reality is not physical and solid and immovable. It's actually very malleable if, if you uh, reach a level of awareness where you, you, you can see how it works. So that's passed over through the secret society network. And this secret society network has created, uh, not least through the Rockefellers in, um, in America, JD, Rockefeller, etc., the education system. It uh, has created and owns the global mainstream media. Um, it owns governments. It owns the World Health Organization. It created Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. It created Facebook and Google, which owns YouTube and so on and so forth. So what, what all those things have in common is information. And what does information do? It forms our perception. So here, information is passed over of, of the high uh, level knowledge of reality and the, the plan for humanity. And in the other world, the human world, um, they've created the sources of information which feed to the population. And that is very different to this. That's telling you this world is solid that um, scientists uh, know what they're doing just because they're scientists, that doctors know doctors what they're doing too, yeah. they're doctors. Therefore, if a scientist tells you something, you've got to believe it or you're crazy. Uh, or a doctor says this, well, you, you, know, you can't go against that uh, because uh, he's a doctor or she's a doctor. They must know what they're doing. And they've set up the government and, and the education system. And so this is how it works. The idea... Um, is to squeeze as much as possible the information, thus perception of reality, that the population has access to. So you come out of the womb and immediately your parents are influencing your sense of reality. The parents that have been through the process you're about to go through and been programmed by it overwhelmingly, not always, but overwhelmingly. You then come out, out into the world and in... I don't know, three, four years now, you're in a school, you're um, sitting at a desk and an authority figure representing the state is telling you what is, what isn't, what is real, what isn't real, what has happened, what hasn't happened, what's possible, what's not possible. They're telling you when you have to be there, when you can leave, when you can talk, when you can eat, when you can go to the toilet. Your whole environment is controlled and you've only just arrived in the world. And um, the, the teacher um, representing the state, because they teach what the state tells them they're going to teach, um, is the authority figure and the arbiter of all knowledge, etc. Now, if you um, have that situation over and over from the earliest age, two things can uh, 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 happen and do happen. One is you start to learn very early on that if you question or uh, disobey authority, there are consequences. Now, this is, this is working to get you into, as, as an adult, someone who acquiesces by reflex action. Conditioning, yeah. And, and the, other, the other part of it is you see authority or an authority figure as the arbiter of knowledge. Uh, and so this goes on through your um, school life and into university. And this is where the, the postage stamp consensus comes in. It's this narrow band of information, sense of the possible, that um, is taught. It's not just taught in the schools and the universities. 
it's it's uh, underpinned by the 24-hour media that are mm -hmm. taking the postage stamp consensus as the foundation for how they report the world. And then at, at the end of the um, your education period, you go out into the world of work, and now you're meeting people overwhelmingly who've been through the same process you've been through and bought it and believed mm -hmm. in it. And so now you're in the world of work with people who've been through what you've just been through only earlier. And everyone's confirming to everyone else that what they've been um, told is true, this mm -hmm. postage stamp consensus. So um, everybody knows that, mate. That's the line. And then this postage stamp is then defended by those who've been programmed to believe in it uh, by their reaction to anyone right. that wants to step off the postage stamp and say, actually, I'm going to look over here to see if this makes sense. And that's when you get the, uh, the black sheep, the, the mm -hmm. people who are targeted for being crazy or being dangerous and all that stuff, or, or being mad because they've stepped off the postage stamp and they've thought, well, <laughs> yeah. there's more to know than they've been telling me. So much more. You know, and, and I would say this to people um, on the postage stamp. According to mainstream science, the, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is about 0.005% of what exists in the universe in terms of energy in all its forms. Some say it's as high as 0.5, but it's tiny, whatever. And um, so if you look at visible light, which is the only band of frequency that we can actually see, it is a, a fraction of the 0.005%. So if we're going to have a starting point, it's what was said by Socrates in ancient Greece, or reported to have said anyway, wisdom is knowing how little we know. So from that perspective, you know, there's one thing that you always know and can never be wrong about. Whatever you know, there's always more, more to know. know. Yes. So, but what the postage stamp is saying is this is all you need to know. And if you go exploring beyond that, then you're in trouble. And so this cult has created a, a structure in which not only does the, the, the does a, a human life pro proceed through this program to, you know, to the graveyard, mm -hmm. but that the target population has formed within it people who program the program, program that's right. people who program the program, a, a program that that's what we call teachers. That's what we call academics. That's what mm -hmm. we call doctors. It's what we call journalists, what we call politicians. These are all people uh, I mean, some of some of them in terms of politicians and others, you know, the inner core will be connected to this cult and will know what's happening here. Mm -hmm. But most of them won't. It, it's done like this. And, and you know, the, the California law they're bringing in, which says, oh, yeah, to doctors, if you question the official, <laughs> you can be struck off. That is an extreme or not even extreme anymore. It's more it'll becoming, it'll be right. the way things are going. But it's it's a wonderful example of how this structure works. So you're a teacher. Yeah. Do you want to program these kids to believe what the state wants them to believe so that they'll be limited their entire life? And most people, most teachers, not all of them, mind. Right. Will say, no, I don't want to do that. Don't right. Do that. OK, so why are you doing it? Oh, well, because if I want to be a teacher, I've got to teach this curriculum in a right. particular way. And if I don't, then I'm out. Right. So, doctor, um, why why have you been giving this <laughs> knowing the dangers of doing so? I mean, the figures show it. Uh, um, oh, clearly. Yeah. Why are you doing that? Well, because if I don't do it, I won't be able to be a doctor anymore. Yeah. So this is this is how this works. It set up this structure where it enslaves the programmers just as it enslaves those being that's right and the 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 um 
the the antidote to it is simply saying no no it's simply refusing to cooperate and to do that first of all you've got to let go of the fear mm-hmm. of consequences for doing what you know to be right this this is the, one of the great foundations of it and how it 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 it, it manages to proceed uh, and it's that people um instead of doing what they know to be right as a first second and last i'm doing what i know to be right irrespective of the consequences mm-hmm. you know you, you're telling me to think of consequences well hold on that means i am going to conceive the possibility that because of those consequences i'm not going to do what i know to be right expanded consciousness will never do that right consciousness in fear will do that right because what it says is yeah uh but what's best for me uh, what's in it for me or whatever and it's this um this fear of consequences that makes you serve the system which is actually not only just enslaving you it's enslaving your kids and your grandkids mm-hmm. And it's, it's just this point of reaching a, 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 a point of consciousness where you say, no, I'm not doing this to these kids. I'm not doing the, this to these patients. I'm not doing what I know to be wrong. I'm, not, I'm only going to do what I know to be right. And, and if there are consequences for that, well, there'll have to be consequences. Because the point is, unless we start doing what we know to be right, the lack of which is how we got into this mess. Right. Where we're being taken is going to reach its its end point. That's right. People think it's it's scary now. They they, they want to <laughs> have a look at where this is meant to go. Yeah. So this is a pivotal point where uh, people's um, uh, not just desire but total determination. That's it. To do what they know to be right. That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to do to bring this house of cards down. I mean, and, and enough of us have to decide because, and, and you know, this is, it's part of the conditioning is that the, they, they count on the fact that most people will look to others. And, you know, unfortunately this has become the way it is. We look to government to, to, to take care of us. You know, you look too often towards that and you're, you're going to find yourself in a, in a, in a bad situation. And that's where the America is, Unfortunately, you know, the ringleader in this in a lot of ways, of course, you know, our origins come from Europe, um, but it's, you know, they're, they're, they're partners in crime. And, and what, what I always try to try to, there are no borders. No, not for, not for them. But, um, you know, it's, it's like that old lesson in school, you know, you learn quickly that if somebody gives you a crack, then if you give them a crack back, you're the one that's going to get in trouble, you know, you, and, and what, what I see happening so much is, and what I've realized really uh, in the last couple months, really, really reading all your work is, you know, even people who can perceive the retaliation, you know, uh, you, do you see what they did? You know, did you see what Germany was doing? Did you see what <clears throat> this country is doing? Oh, Putin is doing this. <clears throat> He's so evil, but that what they don't see is the provocation. They don't see the initial, you know, the thing that started it all. And that is by design. And if, if, if people, and you said this in one of your books, you said, you know, if the German soldiers realized that they were being used and manipulated, they wouldn't, they would have never went along with it. Just like the American soldiers and would have never went along with it. If they, if, if they had realized that they were being played as far back as, you know, World War II and even World War I was was orchestrated and provoked and put into motion in so many ways. And this is what people can't comprehend, you know, for for a lot of reasons, but which, you know, the information for them to understand exactly how that has gone on literally is there and it's in your books and you've spent your life putting it together. So if you want to understand the world and, and what's happening right now in Ukraine with NATO and Russia, what has gone on, you know, every, every, every calamity, every catastrophic war has been by design. It could have never gone on without that design. 
and and you know i'm grateful for for your incredible body of work and dedication because you know i am much more enlightened as to the the way that these things work the bigger picture of, of you know it's, the, it's a simple question um is putin fighting this war in ukraine no is zelensky the so-called ukrainian leader is he fighting the war in ukraine no is biden who talks about we are, are not going to uh, do this we will do that has he ever um is he f fighting the war no None of them are. None of the European leaders that are taking action, which is fueling the fire of this mm -hmm. uh, conflict, which is all designed to happen, um, are fighting the war. The population is fighting the war and the population is suffering the consequences of other members of the population fighting the war. If anyone um, cared about the people of Ukraine, and, and you, know, you kind of indicated it earlier, it's what they're doing. They, they work the emotions. They're brilliant at working the emotions. So they have an emotional response instead of a cold thinking, mm -hmm. uh, calculated Critical. thinking yeah. response above emotion. Uh, they want the emotion because that scrambles the mind and stops uh, critical thinking. So the uh, emotional thing with Ukraine is the Putin's bombing these innocent Ukrainians. Okay, but like you say, um, and I was pointing this out long, long before. Yes, you were. The, the, Na the, Na the NATO countries, or the NATO, which is which is a cult operation. NATO, it's run by this this cult. That's why it doesn't work for the benefit of, of, of people and the population. It works for the benefit of this cult. And they were uh, poking Putin uh, and Russia in the in the chest over and year over, after year after year after year. And then when uh, Ukraine started, or Zelensky, who's just a puppet of the US, which yeah. is a puppet of the cult, uh, says, um, oh, we, we want to join uh, NATO. And then um, uh, people like uh, Kamala Harris, who I'm going to brain cell to rub together, <laughs> after Ukraine before this started and said, you know, we're sympathetic of Ukraine joining NATO. And of course, the Russians are saying, well, that's a red line for us. Yeah. Ukraine joining NATO. And so the, the whole thing uh, then, then kicks off. But what I, what I was saying is, if people really cared about the people of Ukraine, they would be working and pressing 24 hours a day to get both groups around the table to stop mm -hmm. the violence. That's what they would do. That's but right. instead of that, they're fueling more and more and escalating it mm -hmm. because the war is what they want. Peace is what they don't want. Right. And, you know, we, we can get into why, why that why that is. It's a it's a, a, a deep esoteric uh, foundation to all this, because mm -hmm. keep coming back to this cult, this world of the cult. They understand what reality is. They understand how it works. They understand how psychology works. This is what the, is passed on through the generations of the cult, the um, ever more accumulated knowledge of how the psyche works how emotions work and um how reality works uh, and so um they know that uh they know who this is um actually a a simulation it's a it's a it's a fake reality that we're experiencing it's the incredibly advanced equivalent to having a headset on mm -hmm. and um the uh you know, if we, if we go um, uh, deep, deeper into this, where this is all coming from, I got a, so much, of course, ridicule in the 1990s when I first came out and said, actually, behind all this is a non-human force. Mm -hmm. And I talked about reptilians and, and other uh, non-human uh, uh, expressions and entities. But the point is that you, you've got to go uh, beyond form to find a real... Um, the real point of where this is coming from so uh you know you it doesn't matter if you've got a reptilian body or a human body or a, a, a right. gray body it doesn't matter what's driving your behavior is your state of consciousness yes so in the end whether, whether this control system plays out through non-human species into the human world in the end it's a state of consciousness that's driving it Bill Gates does what he does because of his state of consciousness. That's right. 
uh, and, and other people do what they do because they have a different state of consciousness to, 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 to Bill Gates. It's all consciousness in the end. Yes. And what, what I suggest we're looking at is a, a simulation that has multiple levels. It has this level we call the human world. And then it has other levels um, which are beyond human sight. And, you know, there, people talk in, uh, in the esoteric world about the astral dimension. And, you know, again, we come back to this um, postage stamp consensus. If you don't want people to grasp the nature of the reality that, that they're experiencing, then you don't teach it in the, right. in the area the population has That's access right. to. So um, you want them to believe that there is this world and this world only. I mean, you get religions to religious people to believe there's another. Right. Basically, this physical world is all there is. So at that point, any idea of something beyond the world of the scene, which is what? Beyond the world of the five senses, mm -hmm. is madness and can't exist. Um, so uh, when people talk about uh, uh, other, uh, be, because the, the, the five senses demand that their se this, those senses are stimulated before mm -hmm. they will believe anything. That's right. Right. So they say, well, I've never seen a reptilian. Right. Right. Yeah. But by the way, you are looking and perceiving uh, visual reality with a band of frequency so small, it's hysterical. It's hysterical, right. right? So you can't see because anything beyond that frequency band, although it exists, you can't see it. Right. And if you demand that only if I can see it, touch it, taste it, etc., you're going to believe in it, then you're only going to believe in what happens in the narrow band of frequency. You're not going to perceive the possibility of anything going on beyond it. So that's what this cult has done in terms of programming the population. Yes. So um, what, what we have is this astral dimension or lower fourth, the fourth dimension uh, or lower astral, lower fourth dimension that uh, people talk about. And it's not kind of up there. When people talk about, you know, heaven or, or the realities, <laughs> the yeah. they look up, you know, I'm going to heaven. Well, no, no. Um, it's not like that. It's like radio and television stations in the analog system sharing the same space. So, so we're on this television channel, and that's what we're aware of. But mm -hmm. all the other channels, realities, are sharing the same space we are without interfering with us because they're on a completely different wavelength. But these, uh, this lower level of this astral dimension uh, or fourth dimension um, comes very, very close to our reality and, in fact, can interact with it. Mm -hmm. And that's where this... Uh, non-human force operates from ultimately it's a state of consciousness and this has been described by ancient cultures all over the world in their different Certainly. ways they've had different names for these entities they've had different names for the consciousness but it's they're telling the same story and and so um what you have is um this lower fourth dimension by its very nature is is a low frequency state and to control humanity we have to be kept within that low frequency state mm -hmm. because once you expand your awareness you're through that into a high expanded frequency state and you can then see and perceive here what this force doesn't want you to see right so what they're doing is it, it, people imagine like a bubble a bubble around this simulation as a bubble and there's different levels of it including the the level we call the, the human physical world but to keep you in that bubble so that even when you leave the body you're still in the simulation in the matrix you're in other mm -hmm. levels of it um to keep you in that bubble and stop you getting through and out into the great infinite beyond, mm -hmm. they have to hold you in a certain low vibrational state. And that vibrational state that, 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 that we, we, we generate, that we become, comes from our perceptions and it comes right. from self-identity. So you start to get deeper into why they are obsessed 
with controlling our sense of self and controlling our perception. They want us in this low frequency state because then we can't uh, literally. And, and it's a survive. It's it's a it's 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 the reptilian part of your brain. It's not a coincidence. There are there are no coincidences, but it's not a a you know oh isn't that weird it's that's also the part of the brain that we call the reptile brain it's the survival part of the brain it's the reason why there is periodic blunt force trauma inflicted by these call on humanity 911 JFK it has to be done in order to keep people living in fear this is part of the vibration that they need to maintain because if people stop and there is a sense of peace and i mean there's a reason why they don't teach meditation in school they do not want if i mean all the studies that have come from meditation and mindfulness would indicate that if you want a peaceful society then really all you need to do is teach your children to be mindful and 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 spend some time of the day in reflection and meditation and and you have this ripple the, the maharishi effect that happens you know with that is 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 measurable literally but they don't do that because they don't want that, you know? I mean, that would be a simple thing to do. And so it, it amazes me that people kind of, they, they take what you have said and, and because they've been so conditioned to, to believe that this world is limited to these, to this hysterical minuscule perception that we can perceive with the eyes and the five senses. And they, they, they dismiss what you're saying because of it. It boggles my mind because those are the same people who I notice over and over have no mindfulness. They have they have they have not plugged in at all to anything other than the five senses. And so there it's easy for them to hurl, you know, insults at people who think and see things that they don't because and I think part of them is subconsciously extremely frustrated with their existence because they can't see it. And I think part of them wants to part of them needs to. Anyway, that's my uh, yeah. That, well, yeah. that's absolutely right. And and you know when you when you quieten the mind and you get one step back from the five senses, then then your consciousness can start to expand. It, it can go where it, it what it chooses to go. What the five senses are all always doing is reacting and telling your perception where it needs to go. Whereas when you're just in a quiet space, I mean, I spend like 90 percent of my day daydreaming um i don't meditate as such but i daydream which is just letting my mind go where it wants to go uh, because what they want you is constantly in the five senses so you're reacting all the time uh, to to five sense stimuli and uh, therefore um the reptilian brain becomes very very um important to that because it's a, a, a survival mechanism well you know, uh, you know, it, it is in a way, but I think it's, it's there actually because the the survival mentality gives this non-human force everything it wants. Mm -hmm. Like road rage comes from the uh, reptilian brain, and the reptilian brain doesn't think; it reacts. That's why it can kick in mm -hmm. before the thinking mind, the thinking brain can can uh, have a say in what happens. That's why when people react and, they, and then they go, oh my God, what was I doing? Mm. Well, th that's the best one. Oh my God, what was I thinking? Well, you weren't, <laughs> you weren't thinking, you that's right. You were reacting, that's the reptilian brain. This is road rage and all of it, like I say. Um, and uh, if you look at it also, the symbolism of the Matrix movies, where it was in that brainstem area that mm -hmm. the, the probe went in, which took people into the Matrix. And that's another point about uh, that symbolism. When you had the um, the Matrix characters, the, your Neos and your your Morpheus uh, characters um, outside the Matrix, they were in the ship outside the Matrix, outside the simulation, mm -hmm. simulated illusion. But they didn't go into the illusion with their body. They went into it through their mind. It was their mind, that was the connection symbolically in the movies, that took their mind into the simulation. We are in here with our mind. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. And if our mind can be manipulated to perceive um, what the matrix is feeding us, 
then we will create it. That's right. We will create it It'll be, because we're literally processing information through the mind to create this reality. Um, and and that's the loop. That's that. That's the creative loop that we all have, at, you know, as little individuations and children of of the Creator. We 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 are made in its image, right? And and it is a creative force. And so that loop, yeah. Great example is this, is the computer. Okay, uh, there's not Wi-Fi in this room, but if there was, um, then where is it? I can't see it. The Wi-Fi, it's a field, it's a radiation field of information, fantastic amounts of information. And the computer tunes in, connects with that field of information, which we can't see, and puts it in a totally different state to what it is in the Wi-Fi field on the screen. So suddenly you, you ask people, you know, describe the internet to me, they'll say it's moving pictures and graphics and words and what have you. And okay, yeah, but only on the screen. That's the only place it exists in that form. Everywhere else, it's a Wi-Fi field and electronic circuits and what have you, but it's, it's the only place the internet exists on the screen in that form is on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same with us. The only place this world exists is, is in the decoded um, uh, region, regions of the brain that right. decode uh, waveform information, electrical information into electromagnetic information into uh, the, the world that we think uh, we are, we are uh, perceiving. We, we perceive it to be outside of us, and that's what it seems like, but actually it's, it's inside of us. Right. So um, if I'm um, a, operating this computer, my state of consciousness, my perceptions, my self-identity is deciding where on the Wi-Fi field I'm going to go. What I'm going to take out of the Wi-Fi field and turn into a reality on the screen. Am I going to go to TikTok? Am I going to go to a news site? Am I going to go here? My consciousness, my perception, my self-identity is deciding that. And what, what I found fascinating, the more I've got into this, is how this technological world that's unfolding so fast is simply technologically mimicking the reality and how we perceive and, and create the reality we actually do. It's overriding it. It's, it's like the headset. The headset is mimicking how we create reality through the five senses because, you know, the five senses do what? They turn waveform information, wave field information, into electrical information, which is then communicated to the brain that turns it into holographic, digital holographic information, which is the world that we, we perceive to be uh, outside of us when it's, when it's not. And so um, everything, even me communicating with you now, it's all vibration uh, that is vibrational information that is decoded into uh, all the different um, elements of what we call human life. So. My vocal cords are, um, are generating a frequency field called speech, but it's not speech when it leaves my, my mouth. It's a vibrational field. And then the receiver picks up that vibrational field, turns it into electrical information, which is, which is fed to the brain, and then the brain decodes it into whatever the person is being, set, being, being told. Um, and so you, you, all the five senses work like this. So they now have um, a, a pain relief uh, system where they seek to stop the message coming from the point of impact, the pain, to the brain. Because if that message is broken, the, the, the message is not received by the brain. Right. The brain does not decode that into, ouch, that bloody hurts. It doesn't do it. And, and, and so everything's going on in here. Everything's leading here. And, and this, what we call the heart, consciousness, can override that system. It can override it. That, that's where, where it's really coming from, to override the program. Because without that expanded awareness overriding the program, the program just, just drives you. You think, oh, I've had this thought. Well, have you? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling like this. Well, are you? Mm. Are you the true I feeling that? 
or is it the program feeding that in response to a situation it's been programmed to respond to in a certain way? It, it, I found it interesting as I traveled all around the world for decades, all over the world, country after country after country, it didn't matter what the culture was, didn't matter what the, the, the language was or anything, people tended to respond in the same way to the same stimuli. Mm. So, and, and it's because there's, there's this programming level where the body is literally a computer. Yeah. It's a biological computer and it's responding to program. But when you open this and you expand your awareness, you start to override the program and you start to do things differently to what the program will do. And then mm -hmm. you start to stand out. Then you start walking around the matrix like Neo. Then things yeah. start to change for you. you know? Exactly. And you start to realize that, that um, the world of I can't is actually the world of I can. But we have to be programmed to believe we live in a world of I can't um, so that we won't. Right. And, and therefore, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, unravel this, uh, this perceptual uh, program that yeah. people are uh, subjected to. So it's the, the individuals, the mavericks, the maverick people, the maverick people who are spontaneous and don't, don't immediately um, react like other people. Don't accept things without question. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are overriding the program. And those that, um, that don't override the program, what well, the program's driving them. They may, they may think they're making decisions and feeling things. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the program that's re that, that they're responding to, not, not the consciousness, which has been shut out. It's right. like, if you, um, can I put it? Okay, if, if I look at my finger now, and I really focus on the finger, all peripheral vision has disappeared. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is the five senses. They want you to so focus on the five senses that all peripheral vision, other levels of consciousness, right. get shut out. And the longer you do, the harder it is to, to reconcile what is actually going on, you know, and then you hear people like us having this conversation and, <laughs> you know, the part of you, I, you know, I think there's just like this, a, there's a disconnect that happens, but that's because of all the, you know, if the foundation isn't there and that's what, when I hear you talk about, you know, people are set free. One of the first things that happen is happens is that is this, this has to open, the heart has to open. And that sounds new age and it sounds woo woo, but the heart has a mind of its own. Literally it has neurons, you know, a lot of them actually. So does the gut, but that's another podcast. But but in order for people to start to ascertain greater truths, I've always been, and this has been my experience as well. You know, my quest when I started, I didn't even know it was, but I, but but I knew that I had a lot of uh, trouble opening my heart. I was an actor, and I couldn't I couldn't do it. What kind of I, you know? How could I be the next Marlon Brando if I couldn't if I couldn't show my vulnerability? And so I knew. I had had acquired a problem. I didn't know where it came from at the time and really didn't know my ass from a hole in the ground at the time. But, but my, my mission was to figure out how to open my heart. And that's how I got to where I am that long story short, you know, and what I understand about the world now has come from this opening and, 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 you know, why is it so important, David? Why do people need to understand that, that the, the, these things that we've built over our our hearts, you know, it's part of the conditioning, right? That's what the trauma is about. If you can guard your heart, then you're cut off from a lot of things. Can you talk yeah, about that? In the head, and they want you in the gut. They want you in your uh, low vibration emotion, and they want you in mental processes, uh, five sense mental processes. They don't want you here, because this is the connection out into the great beyond. Once you open that, everything starts to change. You start to see things you couldn't see before. You start to see how things connect rather than things that seem to be individually random. This sees random. This sees holes. This sees uh, dots. This sees pictures. And, and if they can pull you out of the heart into the head and the, the gut, they got you. Because mm. then uh, you look at mo most people, they are driven 
not by their intuition, which comes from here. What, when, when, people, when people say, I, I'm thinking, what do they do? They go, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. When people say, I know, I just know, what do they do? I know, I just mm -hmm. know, because they're, they're instinctively going to that place that it's coming from. And, you know, when people say like, that they intuitively know something, that intuitive knowing doesn't come as a process of, of thoughts leading to a conclusion. The conclusion comes first mm -hmm. comes as a whole. I just know because you are tapping into that level of awareness that does know where we are. We are in a world manipulated to be. So it doesn't know. And if it doesn't know, it's got to try and work it out, even if it bothers to. Mm -hmm. So you have the process of thought trying to work it out. What's going on? What's happening? And, and then you've got here, which is all where, where the, the, the fear and right. anxiety comes from, which is a low vibrational state that holds you in a low vibrational state, which holds you in this, this trap, this mm -hmm. simulated multi-level bubble. Um, and, and they got you. But when you open this, you start to know things, literally know things that yes. come whole. I, oh, I can see it now. I can see how that works. Like I said earlier, you know, I, I started after about two years into this, getting this knowing of what was going on. And then the name states, places, information mm -hmm. come for the benefit of the head and the, the gut, uh, particularly the head, um, to, to show me that actually that that's is actually what's going on. But um, it, it's, it comes. And then how many times have you said, I knew it? I knew because you did know it. Right. It's it's. Yeah. It's incredible I'll process that happens. I'll tell you a quick story. <clears throat> Just after the turn of the millennium, from here, one day, I got, this is a simulation, and the limit of the simulation in our reality, the human reality, is the speed of light. Just got it. And I started talking about it and writing about it. And then um, as the years passed, first of all, more and more mainstream scientists were starting to say, well, actually, it, it, it does look like we could live in a simulation. And when you realize we do, so many mysteries of reality just disappear once you realize that. And then in April, I think it was 2021, there was a, an article in Scientific American uh, by an academic who said that he concluded that um, we live in a simulation and the limit of the simulation is the speed of light, <laughs> which Makes kind of, sense. Uh, caught my interest very quickly. And anyway, what he was saying, because what, what I've been saying over the years is the laws of physics, as we call them, are actually the rules written into the simulation, right? the limitation rules. So when people have near death experiences and they, they leave the body, they uh, experience a very different reality, a very different law of physics, if you like. That's right. Um, That's why they're not actually laws, but I don't, you know, we like to call things yeah, laws. <laughs> laws, but they're written into the... Into the yes. Law. So, um, so it, 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 this, this guy mentioned that in this article, and he, uh, he thought that, that was the, the case. But then he said, he, he related the speed of light, which is not the fastest speed possible, to... Yeah. Um, processing speed and he was he was saying that um you can write the the laws or the rules of the game if you like the limits of the simulation what is possible and not possible without being overridden by consciousness that is um but you're still going to be limited by your processing speed and your processing speed is the speed of light so it seems in many various ways in the reality we're experiencing that speed of light is the faster speed mm -hmm. because it's the simulation speed but when you go beyond it, you've, and, and indeed you can do things in this world that show you that the uh, speed of light is not the fastest speed of anything. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with my skeptic friends and, you know, people who are in my life who I, you know, who I have great respect for and love who are, they, they just want to, you know, I, I'm trying to explain to them how when a civilization gets to a certain point, that the technology is assisted by consciousness in every way that, you know, these, we, we know this from some of the, you know, the, the, well, the, the UF, the UFOs um, that we've recovered, we know how they work. Well, at least we, we figured it out, but we couldn't figure out how they worked to begin with because we couldn't find the, the part where, you know, you control them with your, with your 
you know, your paws, <laughs> your hands, because they don't work like that. But it's but consciousness assisted technology is what allows these civilizations to, you know, that I mean, if they had to travel the speed of light, I can see why people have a real hard time reconciling, you know, how they would get here at the speed of light. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. But it's just it's it's uh, ironic to me. But not surprising that those people who I have the same discussion with, you know, they're the biggest materialist skeptics that I know. And they can't reconcile the fact that the speed of light is the is, you know, just that. It's the speed of light, but it is not the fastest way that we can travel and that that we will travel in this light. So it's just like those are the people who are most plugged into their senses, and they're the ones who have the most trouble understanding that this is such a limited slice of reality yeah and, and you know if you look at um those that qualify for these uh academic scientist uh areas that um basically present human society with this is how it is and this is this is what's possible and this is what not possible they're overwhelmingly dominated by five sense prisoners. Mm -hmm. um, and everything has to come through the five senses. I, I mean, I, I watch, I mean, you must too. I, I watch sometimes scientists uh, talking about uh, what they believe to be science and how things are, and you're shaking your bloody head. They might say things like, well, you know, that's not possible. Like for instance, um, when people um, say they see uh, uh, UFOs or, yeah. or whatever appearing out of nowhere and then disappearing into nowhere, well, of course, a five sense scientist says that's not possible. Right. So, and so I'm a scientist, so I know what I'm doing. So you've got to believe that. Or they say there has to be a physical, an explanation in the physical, you know. Well, it's very simple. Um, we, 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 the observer, can only see a tiny band of frequency. When something enters that band of frequency, it appears to, to manifest out of nowhere. When mm -hmm. it leaves the band of frequency, it right. appears to disappear into nowhere. But it hasn't disappeared. It's just left the frequency. That's that right. Can perceive. Uh, but uh, it, it is hard. See, I left school at 15 um, to play football. I never took a major exam in my life. Um, and I'm looking at these uh, scientists with endless letters after their name, and I'm shaking mm -hmm. your bloody head. Uh, at, at the at the the uh, ridiculous uh, inability to see the obvious, um, but there's two things to that. One, if they did see the obvious, they wouldn't be scientists for very long in the mainstream. <laughs> That's right. right? So th there's there's a um, there's an incentive to to not. That's be right. Busy. But uh, the 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 other thing is they they are so uh, programmed to believe in materialism. And, and the solidity of everything and the apartness of everything mm -hmm. that they can't literally possibly compute the idea that some of this so-called paranormal um, is possible because they can't perceive how right. it's possible. And, you know, they call it the paranormal. There's nothing para about it. It's perfectly normal. Right. And, but, but what is normal? Normal is only what we normally experience. And within this reality, with its uh, laws of physics, we only normally experience uh, certain things, and, right. and you know, it, it, you know, if you only normally experience CNN, you'll have a <laughs> certain view of the world. That's right. But if That's you sure. normally experience something much more expanded, or hardly possible not to be, then you, you'll have a different perception because you have a different normal. You know, and when people say it's not normal, it means it's not normal to me right but it's perfectly normal i mean the ancients and you know the the, the people with expanded awareness the paranormal is perfectly normal it happens all the time you know people right. say uh, well how how is it possible for um for me to um or, or if, if someone says um I've, I've heard it said many many times uh that you were thinking of someone right and then the phone rang and that someone um was there and what a scientist would say uh, is it's just a coincidence. Right. It's a coincidence. And it doesn't matter how many people have that same coincidence. <laughs> no, no. Talk about conspiracies. They literally cannot explain it because they don't understand how reality works. You see, this is, we come back to this again. 
if you have this cult and it's trying to keep from the population how reality works because it has to to mass control you don't want your people in the human world in the form of academics teachers and uh, doctors and whatever your scientists telling the people what you don't want them to know <laughs> so you what you can do therefore is appoint people who know what you know uh, but don't tell the population now that ain't probably going to last very long is it so you have a few people in there that know what you know, but don't want the people to know because they're actively working for you. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of them, they're telling the people what this, th this cult wants them to believe because they believe it too. That's right. They have no idea. But they have no idea. And, and the, the example I've just, uh, just mentioned, when we think, we generate frequency. When we feel emotion, we generate frequency, and it's That's unique right. to us. So when uh, and we have this field, this like Wi-Fi field that connects everything, and through the field, these frequencies flow. That's right. So, um, I, I um, my my brother said that he had someone uh, in his mind, and then immediately the the, the person called, and there mm -hmm. it was. And the point is. Oh, I was just thinking of you. Well, why were you thinking of them? Yeah. Because they were about to call you and they were thinking of you. Right. So this connection happens, especially people that are very close and the, the, the frequency starts. Yes. So, and therefore, oh, I'm going to ring so and so. And so and so thinks, oh, it's also. What a, yeah, what a quick. I was just thinking of you. Something to my mind. And then the phone rings, oh. <laughs> I'm just thinking of you. That's a, that's 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 paranormal. That is that's not yeah. normal. But this is this is this is it all comes back in the end. So you've got to keep from the population what that's this right. is. And and that's the, the the power dynamic that allows a few to control the many. It's very well put. And I and I know that, you know, one day soon, I hope, um, because um, I, there's so much technology that is being suppressed and hidden um, for monetary and power reasons, you know, that soon enough people will be able to see quote scientifically just how that is and how it's, you know, how it is actually measurable, how our thoughts don't stay in our head, but they literally leave and they enter the, the, the ether, if you will. I know that word is, not very popular in the scientific community, but but there's but for lack of a better term, you know there there is an interconnectedness to all things. We know now there's a biofield that used to be considered pseudoscience, right? The whole notion of a biofield was considered pseudoscience. Well, it turns out that it the biofield is very present and very measurable, so we know that now. But you know, science will catch up with what you know the ancient the metaphys some of the metaphysical truths that we have come to understand uh and that that have been lost not by accident over the years by, by, by absolutely by design by design by purpose uh because you know uh, what 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 this cult has been doing is uh it's been on a, a process of squeezing and squeezing deleting and deleting in the public arena what the ancients knew Mm -hmm. So you had the shaman in the village and the people in the village would, would know what the shaman knew uh, uh, because there was an interaction. So uh, I, when I uh, talked to Credo Mutra, the Zulu shaman, um, who was a great friend of mine, um, and uh, he said that when the, uh, the, the British uh, Empire came into Africa uh, through people like Cecil Rhodes, a uh, Rothschild frontman, mm -hmm. um, they uh, milk the minds of this was his words they milk the minds of the shaman and then killed them mm. um, because they they didn't want that knowledge circulating so what they did then were they 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 took the knowledge obviously um, a lot of it had already known but then they made sure it wasn't circulating in the um, yeah in the community anymore and they did that by introducing science and the science is based on what was based on what you mentioned already um the darwin uh, yeah. um, belief system this is where most scientists are coming from even today 
and and when and I've done this in the books when you um, start to research the, the Darwin family and uh, uh, related uh, people and networks um, they came from a uh, a level of awareness that knew that Darwinism was nonsense. That's they right. Knew. But they had to sell it to the people because Darwinism is a five sense philosophy. Of, of, that's of, right. Of science. So that, that's why it was done um, because they want to it, they wanted to eliminate consciousness. Now this is an interesting point. I did a video you see on my website, which is a few weeks ago now, uh, on this guy um, uh, Harari, this Israeli professor chap um, who claims to be an historian, um, Yuval Noah Harari. And he is a, um, an associate of Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum. Mm, I think I've sp- seen him talk, yeah. Yeah, and, and what he's saying is basically um, that technology is the new god, the cloud, as he calls it, the cloud mm. that um, these people talk about, like Ray Kurzweil, which is... Uh, what is the cloud it, um, that they're generating? This technologically generated um, electromagnetic field, this gigantic global Wi-Fi field, if you like, um, it's overriding, it's overlaying the field that we would uh, normally uh, interact with. And so it is um, creating a, a fake, another fake reality, another layer of the fake reality, what they call the uh, the, the the smart grid mm. and the the, um, the whole um, point of this technology is to um, override normal reality as you might call it the reality that we've been used to with these fields of electromagnetically or technologically generated electromagnetic fields that then then they then tune us into so that becomes our mission control not mm. out there into infinity but they they this cloud this technologically generated cloud becomes our mission control and then feeds us our sense of reality and like a hive mind this is why they want to connect the brain to um artificial intelligence mm-hmm. because um artificial intelligence then becomes the human mind and they have overridden expanded levels of consciousness to permanently hold people in the five senses that's Uh, why they're giving out cell phones in third world countries and and they they need people plugged in you know that is their only way to control them they're doing and you know i i i see this uh this kind of celebrity guy uh, elon musk but uh you you look at what he's doing in his various companies and yeah. he's fulfilling every single aspect of what is necessary, virtually every single aspect of what yeah. is necessary to generate this technological sub-reality. Um, and uh, so it, it's in the, in the end, everything, it doesn't matter what you're looking at, it's all focused on disconnecting people from That's uh, right. expanded states of awareness and holding them only in a five cent state of, um, of perception and sense of the possible one of the other great things that happens with this um postage stamp consensus is they squeeze the sense of the possible um, yes because then when uh, people like me and you and others they come out and they say this is what this is how they're doing it uh this is how they're they're, they're doing this doing that manipulating you and if it's outside, which is not difficult, the, the sense of the possible that people have been programmed to believe, mm-hmm. then they'll just wave their hands. That's not mm-hmm. possible. That's ridiculous. Don't, that's crazy. What are you talking about? That's not possible. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. No, what you believe and what's happening are not necessarily the same thing. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, I've heard some people say, if, if that was true, there's no way they could hide it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what they, they 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 can't imagine and 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 on one hand part of me is like that you know they're in part of them is innocent but part of part of them is naive and and so that's dangerous you know it's unfortunately that's the reason why we've been headed in the direction we're headed and you know i'm i'm 
hoping enough of us come around in time to, to pull the 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 jet up out of the nosedive because the play can't be sustained you know you know as well as better than i do that yeah, it, you know. I, I, there's also a, a, a an instinct in many many people that they they don't want to face what's happening because they don't want to yes face you know this is why it's so easy and this is this is how this cult works through its politicians and people it's so easy to tell people what they want to hear because the, the the doors uh, swinging open already to mm -hmm. receive it but when you're telling people what they don't want to hear, it's a very different uh, game. It's a very yeah. different uh, situation because you're pushing against a closed door. They do not want this to be true because, first of all, it rewrites their entire worldview. Yes. So they're frightened of, that, that, it, that this is what's going on. So that's a reaction uh, mm -hmm. as well. That uh, Very true stops people that's how politicians i mean it's like everyone has amnesia every two four years here in this country it's like wait they just they just they just said that the, yeah. the last guy just said that the guy before that just said that they don't do it they never do it they can't do it they don't even have the power to do it you know what i mean but people well, hear what no, they I, want to hear and they have hope yeah you know? I, I, I i say to people um you know do you know everything and they say well no no one knows everything so then I say, well, what don't you know? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. How, how can I know what I what That's I know? right. Okay. So why are you dismissing things then by reflex action? You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's back to Socrates. Wisdom is knowing how little we know. You know, so it, it doesn't matter how much you think you know. One thing you know for sure, there's always more to know. And that keeps your mind open. It keeps you open to all possibility and doesn't shut it off um, and turn you into a, a, a press enter uh, human being. <laughs> yes. So, so vital. I, I know that um, we're running out of time, but I, I want to ask you one last question, David. I love this question. Um, you know, I talk a lot about programs, uh, computer programs and, and human programming. And we, you know, we, people are, are coming to terms with the fact that we are all programmed. It is, it is an inevitable part of having a human experience is, you know, you're going to be brought up and raised by somebody, you know, whether that be your parents or a guardian, and you're going to inherit programming from them. And, and that program is going to affect the way you see the world, you know? And so I know one of my inspirations for having this podcast was to try to um, inject some programming that was going to be, been more beneficial for my human family and you know I, I i wanted to ask you if you if you know if you could in in a sentence or two you know give people some code uh to, to that they could put into their their software you know that would help them understand and see this reality more for what it is and also give them a greater Give, give us a greater chance uh, at, at an existence that is that matches the beauty of this planet. What would you give them? Well, I, I first tell them that the whole of history shows us that authority lies. It's what it does. Whenever um, official history has been dissected with the passage of what we call time, it's been shown in large part or even in totality to have been total nonsense, total lies. So authority lies, that's what it does. And it lies because it can't tell you the truth. Otherwise you'd realize what it's doing. Um, so the first um, response to any authority, I don't care what form it takes, when they tell you something has happened, you'll tell you why it's happened, they tell you what you must believe about what's happened, it's to stop immediately. And ask a simple question, who benefits from me believing what they want me to believe? and thus responding the way they want me to respond. And if the answer to who benefits is anyone that wants to centralize power and reduce your freedom, then it's time to um, refuse, A, to believe it, 
A to or B to respond in the way they want you to to it and to in any way cooperate with what they're doing. And, you know, it's, it's a simple thing. There's 8 billion people, it's reckon, on the planet now, basically. And yet the number of people in full knowledge who are driving the direction of society is tiny. Um, and it's tiny, and you would think that would make it impossible, and it should be. The only way a tiny few can control 8 billion and direct the world and the lives of 8 billion if, if 8 billion um, acquiesce to what the few tell them and want them to do. Okay, how many people um, wanted to uh, lock down? Uh, how many people want to have um, their life transformed by the uh, hoax of human cause science of which is nonsense? How many people want their um, energy uh, bills to go through the roof because of human caused climate change responses and what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, how many people in the world wanted to invade Iraq for weapons of mass destruction that weren't there? Right. On and on and on it goes. How many people want the southern border of the United States now to be wide open? Right. And, and, and the, the, the answer is the population doesn't. Population doesn't want it. The population in general doesn't want the sexualization of small children in schools. Right. It doesn't want um, the, um, uh, no. the drag queens coming into schools to confuse their perception of gender for a much bigger agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to confuse the uh, gender, then uh, what better way than a bloke with a beard with, uh, with a dress on? Right. Um, and how many people want any of these things? The, the vast majority of the population don't want them. Right. So the next question to ask is why are we having them? <laughs> why are we having them? Because a few people are making it happen. That's right. When the vast majority don't want it to happen. That's, that's uh, in, in itself evidence and confirmation. And they want us to fight over it. Because if we're fighting over that, nonsense then we're not looking at what they're doing we're not paying any attention to the important things well i'll, I'll give you a, 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 an example from the last few days um we've got a obviously a very famous uh, writer in this country called uh, j.r rowling mm -hmm. uh, harry potter books uh, jk rowling right? jk rowling yeah JK rowling, right? and um uh, she's done a lot of good work pushing back on the transgender activists imposition on women, women's sport, women's privacy, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, you know, that's good, you know, and, and she's taken a lot of uh, flat for it. But when uh, Alex Jones had a, a, a more than a billion dollar in the end um, <laughs> award against him, which was designed purely to destroy him. Of course. Um, then she came out saying it wasn't enough. It should have been more. What? She I, did? Yeah. So, My God. So, so what, 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 what you're looking at there, you see, is someone who is um, obsessed with a dot, and that's fair enough, but can't see how the dots connect. They can't no. see that her demand for freedom of speech to talk about um, right. the effect of transgenderism on women actually connects into Alex wow. Jones's right to have his opinion, even if you don't um, agree with it. And even if he's wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th that's, an, that's another point, you know. And, and it, it goes into all this a whole misinformation. And it, again, the irony, because the, the, everything's inverted. <laughs> it's, the, yes. it's the liars that go on about having to stop misinformation. But that's a crucial point you raise there. The right to be wrong is fundamental to human freedom, indeed all freedom. Because if you don't have the right to be wrong, then someone is appointed to decide what is right and what is wrong. And that's when you have the um, situation we have now with yeah. people who are speaking blatantly obvious truths being uh, deleted for misinformation, that uh, being a uh, 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 another way of saying something we don't want people to hear. Right. 
the right to be wrong is fundamental because while people have the right to be wrong, there's no authority saying, well, this is right and this is wrong. So you can say this, but you can't say that. And, and, and this is another part of it too, is, is this, uh, this focus on being offended. The, the whole woke mentality is about being offended and it's offensive. Well, I've never been offended. I don't, I don't know what it feels like to be offended because um, either, you know, if, if, if someone's saying something about you, then they've, well, they've, they've a right to their opinion and right. you, have right, you have a right to not let it affect you. Um, but this offending, offensive uh, stuff is purely there, not to stop people being offended because we don't want to upset anybody. No, actually, you do want to upset people. That's right. That's why you want people to be offended because then two things. One, you started to get an excuse for introducing laws that say what you can and cannot say because you don't want to offend you right. stop people being offended. But secondly, people being encouraged to be offended creates the divide and rule. That's right. That. So the, the system that wants to silence people is then supported by uh, large numbers of people that um, – want to silence people on behalf of the state or they don't mm -hmm. realize that no they don't realize because, it because um they have a different opinion to them and we it's another thing about being conscious and being uh in in a more expanded state is to realize that in the infinity of forever um when when we know so little of what there is to know here then how can you start being arbitrary about what's right and what's wrong? You have no idea what's right and wrong. That's you only right. have a perception of it. They're probably given to you by someone else, including, you know, overwhelming the state. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you've said something I don't like. Fine. And I'll tell you, if I need to feel the need to, I'll tell you why I don't like it. I'll tell you why I think you're wrong. But what I'm not going to do ever is say you can't say it. Because if, if you can't say what you're saying to me, that sets the precedent for me not being able to say what I want to say to someone else. You, I mean, if, if we reach a point of spiritual adulthood, then people say what they want and, they, um, and people respond to it, whether they agree with it or they don't agree with it. And then that's the end of it. That's right. What, 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 once you go into this realm of being offended, well, that, that, that's another point. Okay, I'm offended. Right. You know it's a you choice. Know. It's a choice. You're offended. Right. You, you, you abuse me. I'm not offended. So, again, it's not what people say about us. It's our response to what people say about us that actually decides whether we're affected by it or not. That's right. So I, I've had 32 years of absolute abuse yeah. all over the place, and I've never been offended. Um, and I, I've never once said, this person must be stopped from saying this about me. Um, uh, because, you know, if people um, if people have an opinion about you, well, that, that that's their right. And, and if anyone believes it without question, well, yeah. You know that that's their problem. You know they're obviously not ready to 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 become adults. So you know, say what you like, and and I'll um, I'll just let it go because I'm not going to go around defending myself from from this these these. No, that you would you would have been busy doing that the whole time if you had to. <laughs> you're so you're so busy defending yourself that you never actually do anything. And, and right. I've always had this philosophy: boom, 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 boom. Just keep going. And all the way through my life, I've had people abusing me and trying to bring me down and trying to discredit me and all this stuff. And then they come and they have a go and boom, boom, boom. And they go and other people come in and they, they have a go for a bit. Boom, boom. But they go and, and so it goes on, you know. Yeah. But if, you, if you're offended and, and, and you let it get to you, then they're achieving their end. Which yeah. Is not the idea. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm so grateful for your time, David. I am, um, you know, as I said to you when I emailed you, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours. I have 
the utmost respect for what you've done. Um, I continue to read your work and uh, this has been an absolute joy talking to you. Um, and I'm grateful for your time. So thank you so much for coming on my show and talking to me and sharing some incredible wisdom and insight. Um, I appreciate it. I maybe one day we, we can do it again. Um, and cause there's just so much to talk about and I, I enjoy myself so much. Thank you very much, mate. It's been a real pleasure. I, just, I love talking about these areas we've been going into. It's, uh, Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and while well, you take care and we'll be in, be in touch with the information about the premiere and all that. Cheers, mate. Bye. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Bye.